Okay, welcome to uh, Physics 2425, uh, Introductory Physics. Um, let me share the screen so you can see my PowerPoints. And there they are. Let's see, physics, uh, in particular, uh, mechanics is the study of how objects interact with one another. The objects may range in size from a tiny a single electron to a large planet and beyond. Uh, the interactions usually occur because of the presence of some force or a combination of forces, and such as gravitational forces or electro electromagnetic forces. The interactions may be static, that is, the objects may be stationary, but still influenced by the presence of the other objects, or they may be dynamic, that is, the, the objects may be in motion while interacting with the, one another. Uh, besides learning the rules and laws of physics from a lecture or a textbook, a student of physics should also conduct experiments to see the rules and laws of physics in action. A key to experimentation is taking measurements and recording data. Uh, in order to make sense of the measurements and the, and the data, the, uh, the information must be recorded in consistent units, and that's where we'll get into uh, to start this chapter. Uh, standards of length, mass and time. These are some of the fundamental units that we use in physics. And to have a standard, the standard uh, must be readily accessible. It must possess some property that can be measured reliably. It must yield the same result. And it should not change with time. Uh, you know, if you had some, some st standard weight that would absorb moisture uh, over time it would grow heavier and now you don't want that. Um, so uh, it should not change with time. So these are uh, the first um, unit that we look at is length and it's the distance between two points in space. Um, so the distance from the earth to uh, and the standard that we use is the meter. Uh, the meter is is uh it's about 39 inches you'll you'll see see plenty of meter sticks in the lab uh whenever you conduct a an experiment but sometimes a meter a meter stick is too um too large we'll use a micrometer or we'll use a uh, a vernier caliper to measure smaller lengths um so given that we're going to use the meter as a standard uh, here are some standard lengths in meters. The distance from Earth to the most remote known quasar is 2.7 times 10 to the 26 meters. Uh, one light year is 9.46 times 10 to the 15th meters. Um, the mean radius of the Earth is 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters. Uh, the size of the smallest dust particle is 10 to the minus 4. And the diameter of a proton is 10 to the minus 15. So a meter is the distance traveled by light in vacuum during a time interval of about one to the 300,000, um, I'm sorry, three, we'll just say it as it's read, one over 299792458 seconds. Um, so the speed of light is three, is about 300 meters, three, times 10 to the eight meters per second, 300 million meters per second. To be exact, it's 299,792,458 um, meters per second. But we round it off to three times 10 to the eight meters. Uh, the error you get from doing that, error that you get is very low. Okay, mass. Now, uh, mass is an inherent, uh, property of all objects. Um, it's a measure of their inertia. The more mass something has, the more inertia it has. Uh, you, you have a bowling ball uh, at rest on a floor. You need to give it quite a push uh, to get it rolling. Uh, you have a ping pong. All you need to do is flick it with your finger and you get it rolling. Uh, it's it, a bowling ball were rolling fast, uh, you might not want to stop it with your your toes. It would 
hurt your toes, whereas a ping pong ball coming at you fast, you, know, you can stop it with your, your hand or your toes or whatever. Uh, the more inertia something has, the more mass it has. Uh, we measure mass in kilograms. Uh, so the observable universe is uh, 10 to the 52 kilograms. Um, the sun, 1.99 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. A human, about 100 kilograms, 10 to the, 10 to the 2. An electron, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31. Now, a kilogram is a mass of specific of a specific platinum iridium alloy cylinder kept at the International Bureau, Bureau of Weights and Measures at Survey France, and they are in the process of changing it. Excuse me. Uh, they're changing it right now, uh, and we'll discuss that uh, later. Uh, okay, mass time. Um, the second is 9,192,639,000. Million six hundred and thirty one thousand seven hundred and seventy times the period of vibration of radiation from the cesium one thirty three atom. Uh, we all know what a second is. There's sixty seconds in a minute. I'm about to be attacked here by my cat. Um, you know, sixty seconds in a minute. Thirty six hundred seconds um, in an hour. Um, let's look at some of these. The age of the universe, five, four times 10 to the 17 seconds. Uh, the one year is 3.2 times 10 to the seventh, uh, seconds. One day, 8.6 times 10 to the fourth. Um, the period of audible sound waves, 10 to the minus three seconds. Um, the period of visible light waves is 10 to the minus 15 seconds. And time interval for light to cross a proton is 10 to the 24. Okay, here she comes. What do you want? Um, okay, powers of 10. Um, you know, sometimes you can get values that are so large or so small that it, it behooves you to use prefixes to describe them. Now, I doubt in this uh, semester that we'll use the extremes like 10 to the minus 24 a uh, yakto uh, a yakto meter or um, 10 to the 24th uh, kilograms a yato uh, uh, yato gram uh, there you know we're not going to use those extremes but we will use things like uh, milli like for milliseconds semi for centimeters um, kilogram, the kilo is built into the name, and uh, uh, mega and giga we're used to from electronics or computers, megabytes and gigabytes of storage. And that, now even they, uh, you can go to, down to Costco and get a three to five terabyte uh, hard drive. Um, so we're, those those are coming more into uh, use. But some of these other um, some of these other prefixes we probably won't be using, but it's good to know. And you, you're going to have an exercise uh, on the powers of 10. It's a, it's a fun video to watch. Okay, now density. Now, so we learned about length, mass, and time. These are some fundamental units, but some units that we're going to come up with, like density, is a combination of units. Um, it's, uh, as you see, it's mass divided by volume. So mass and volume are fundamental. Well, volume isn't one of the fundamentals, but it's a length by a length by a length. Um, so density is made up by uh, mass divided by length cubed. Um, so uh, the density, the more, the more massive something is uh, for a given volume, the higher its density is. So we have probably these little uh, pictures here with the styrofoam and the lead. They're probably about, oh, they look like they might be like one centimeter square, thereabouts. Which do you think is heavier? Well, the lead, because it's more dense. Uh, here's a quiz. In the machine shop, two cams are produced of aluminum, uh, one of aluminum and one of iron. Both cams have the same mass. Which cam is larger? Well, if you look in your table of densities, um, aluminum has is a lighter dense dense 
density material than iron. So to get the same amount of mass, you need more of the aluminum. So which cam is larger? Well, the aluminum cam is larger because it takes more of it to be the, as massive as the iron one. So there's the answer. And we'll stop there. We'll continue with a, uh, uh, we'll continue with uh, modeling, I believe is the next section.